Let's talk to Lionel Sanders, second place male professional here in Florida. And Lionel, it was a battle out there we all got to watch. A battle, you've been in a lot of battles through your career. What was this one all about? I mean, I came here to race. I was all in, I was going for the win. And I was going to win or I was going to walk the second half. And I went for it. I didn't walk the second half, but I also didn't win. But it was a great battle. This guy is tough as nails. To be honest with you, I thought I had I thought I had you just though. I mean, wait, were you were you thinking me? Were you thinking me a little bit? I was so glad when you dropped back. Alright. At least at least give me that. He said he said he was so glad when I dropped back. This guy is like Moaning and groaning. I was the first 10 miles. I was hoping it would be in 10 seconds. Well, it didn't happen. We're having a conversation here about the race. It's crazy. Well, you got your stamp, uh, St. George, you got your stamp to uh, Dakota. And every race is a test. This had to be a great test for you. I wanted to see Gustav firsthand. I mean, I didn't really need to come. Like, I had my, my own spot. I had got my, my St. George spot. But I could not miss the opportunity to race this guy. This is a guy who we're going to be racing for many, many years to come. I don't know why he wants to do ITU. I don't get it. But, uh, this is definitely the guy who is going to be the one to beat for many years to come along for us. So I had the privilege to see this first one, and they're only going to go out from here. So I got a lot of work to do. Well, yeah, go ahead. The push where you know you're at. Uh, Lionel, great respect. For Gustav, and I know Gustav has great respect to you. Watching you guys today made the sport an Iron Man club. Thank you very much. I am pretty beat up, I'm not gonna lie. That was a whirlwind of basically a month. We were in Chattanooga, we were gonna call it a season, then Basically, we found out that everyone was coming to California. We couldn't pass up the opportunity. But we were like, I'm not going to California unless I go to the velodrome and do some testing. Then I did that. <sighs> then we went to California. Then you know that whole spiel. Race ends up getting canceled. Morning of the race. Whole stressful situation there. Drove home. Then they told us they're going to move it to Florida. Got on the Florida start list. Travel was a pain there, booking it so late. And so it was a whirlwind and I can feel it, but, uh, but it was fun and we got everything we wanted out of it, certainly.
was cool to hang out with Coach Mikal and with Gustav a bit and Robert Callen. And, uh, you know, I was pretty confident Gustav was going to be the one to beat on the day, of course, with his pedigree. And I uh, did, did a swim session with him in the two days before, and I swam decently well. I, I knew it would be an extreme long shot that I'd be able to swim with him. Um, but, you know, salt water, wetsuit legal swim certainly would help my case. And so, <clears throat> so anyways, we get to the morning, uh, you know, real rushed. It was pretty crazy cold in the morning, and I hate the cold. And so I was just, you know, trying to spend as little time out there as possible. So I get to transition really late, get to the water's edge really late. And I don't even have my wetsuit on yet. And Mike Riley saying, all right, pros, two more minutes in the water, then you're getting out. And I'm not even have the wetsuit fully on yet. So uh, that's my bad, but uh, didn't, didn't body glide the back of the neck. And so now we got some painful neck chafing, but anyways, ended up getting in there for, I don't know, 100 strokes, swarm up got out a couple of minutes later the gun went it was pretty choppy it was you know i i don't know if, ch if, it, if choppy is the right word it was just really windy and it was like an offshore wind creating some weird stuff happening in the in the water fortunately though i got on some feet pretty early and after the first turn i realized that it was the front of the race because i could still see the, the the like the lead kayak or whatever it was and so I just tried to stay there as much as I can. And um, on the back half of the first lap of the course, it was crazy difficult. I don't know if there was a current or something, but it was it was crazy difficult. Felt like I was like swimming really, really hard. Lots of muscle recruitment in order to go, you know, really, really slow. And then you rounded that buoy and then it wasn't too bad going in. Just a bit choppy. And then um, I did all my practice in the days leading in, doing entries and exits. And even with the practice, I still sucked. And I let a pretty big gap open up. Fortunately, the only thing I had going for me is that I didn't spike my heart rate in the run on the beach to the second lap. So that when I dolphin dived back in, I was able to bridge the gap back up onto the feet of the, of the front pack. And then, you know, there was a couple instances there because it was a two-loop swim for everyone. And so now... Everyone's out on their first loop, and uh, so it was very congested. Fortunately, um, a couple of the guys had different colored caps on, so Gustav had a gold cap, Metzler had a blue cap, and I was able to cite those caps uh, amongst the sea of people, and so I was able to stay on the group. And for me, you know, lifetime best swim for sure, made the front pack. There was nowhere, er nowhere else to swim. So I was, you know, really happy with that. Obviously, that starts the day off really well in a situation I literally have never been in, in a professional race. Gustav transitioned amazing. Um, I came out pretty close to Wurf, out onto the bike course. He rode really hard, bridged the gap to Gustav, went by him, entered the lead. A few kilometers later, I went by him, entered the lead, put in, you know, pretty good dig. Didn't use power this race. I logged it, but I never used it. I just used speed and distance and basically just rode the race, rode it hard, uh, you know, met the demands of the race. When Worf came by and would do a surge, I would just keep up with him, didn't care what it took. And that was my intention for the entire race. Um, you know, we looked back a few times and it was a, it was a pretty, it wasn't a big group, but it was a moderate sized group of about five guys. And I knew that that probably wasn't great, uh, especially with Gustav being such an excellent runner. And I was also unsure of Arnaud Guillaume's running ability. And so, you know, certainly I wanted to try to get some separation. And so, you know, Worf put in some good digs, no separation created. And then we were coming, we made a corner, and then there was a decent hill section. And then I went by Wharf and I said, let's drop these guys. And I surged, you know, very hard. I can't tell you how much, because I, like I said, I didn't have the power. But um, I surged really hard. And that was unfortunately right around, I'm assuming, where Wharf started to get sick. Because um, he just slowly pulled the group back. And that was about it. And I knew then that, you know, this was not going to split apart. This was just going to be uh, a group ride to the finish. 
And that's no problem. I went to this race purely to race as hard as I could. I didn't want to play any tactics, couldn't care less. Really didn't care what happened, didn't care. I, tr I said beforehand that um, I'm going to go all out and I may very well walk the marathon. I just don't care. I don't care. I need to do it for me. I need to do it for my mind. I just have felt so unconfident in my biking. And so I needed to prove to myself that I still had biking ability. And so that's what I did. I pulled for a long time. Then eventually uh, Robert came by, did a pull um, pretty well to the finish. Uh, he broke away a little bit towards the end as we went through the final aid station. He didn't take any aid and we all took aid and I was uh, in the front and I'm not going to pull someone back 30 or 40 seconds um, just for the sake of pulling them back. So I knew it was going to be a running race next. And so I just focused on upping my cadence a bit, those final 10 or 15 kilometers to make it kind of closer to the RPMs of running. Um, I biked, you know, with hindsight, I probably overbiked. Well, I certainly overbiked well outside of what I had trained to do. Uh, I pushed 320 watts, average 327 normalized, which is a lifetime best for me. Um, the downside to that was I didn't stick to the nutrition plan. I think I was at the limits of my capacity, and so I was unable to stick to my nutrition plan as well as I would have liked to. And um, I ended up consuming 83 grams of carbohydrates per hour, which for a lifetime best bike, I certainly needed to hit, you know, 100 anyway per hour, I think, in order to keep up with the energy demands of that amount of, of, of energy uh, required to produce 320 watts. Anyways, get off the bike. Decently quick transition. Uh, Gustav and I, I think Robert had to use a bathroom break, and so he... Gave us back all that gap that he had made. And so Gustav and I, side by side, first out onto the run course. And pretty quickly, we could tell that it was just going to be us. And once again, no watch, just going off feel, just racing the thing. And uh, I was actually the one pushing the pace for a lot of the time. And uh, maybe it was a mistake, maybe it wasn't. I don't care. I went there to race. I went there to go really hard and see what I was capable of. And if I blow up, I blow up. And that's what happened. And so we ran side by side for 17 miles, just under 17 miles. And we went through an aid station. I was starting to hurt pretty bad. Gustav took the lead through the aid station. Little gap opened up. I bridged back up to the gap. Uh, and that was it. And I knew that that was it then. And then he pulled away. And, you know, that was, that was my goal. I, I had achieved my goal. I went as hard as I could and I blew up and that's okay. You know, I got to race side by side for 17 miles with who I believe to be, you know, the future, certainly of long distance triathlon. You know, it, the swim was probably a solid 10 minutes slower than it should have. The bike was a little bit longer than 180K. If you crunch the numbers on that, I mean, Gustav would have debuted on an accurately measured Ironman course in and around seven and a half hours. That's a debut. So this guy's legit. He is the future of long distance. You know, he's certainly going to push the limits of, I think, human capacity. And so I got to see that firsthand. I know what it's going to take to contend against him. And uh, so I have no regrets how I raced, that I did the race, nothing. It was a great experience. And I am absolutely fired up to go back to work, continue to hone all aspects of my game, continue to train better and better and better, more scientifically, and contend for longer than 17 miles on the run at St. George in 2022.